Hey everybody, what is up? I am the Mac Mage, and in this video tutorial, it's going to be for the new Mac user. I'm going to show you how to make your MacBook read to you, so stay tuned. <music> If you are new to the MacBook, you probably do not know some of the awesome features that Mac has built into its OS. Starting a little bit before Mavericks, Mac started allowing you to have highlighted text selected and spoken to you. Now we have, ever since Mavericks, been able to have the ability to have our MacBooks read to us. Now why is this beneficial to us? Well let's say you want to be doing something in the background such as if you're reading for pleasure and you want to be doing dishes or you don't have access to the audiobook but you do have the iBook, you can turn this book on in the background and go do what you're doing, like your chores or whatever. Uh, you can also do this on other devices, other other iDevices such as your iPhones, iPads, iPods, etc. The thing is, is that they cannot read in the background. So if you're doing something else on your iPhone or other iDevice, it will stop the reading feature. Your MacBook is pretty good about allowing you to read in the background if you're doing other things. So that's why I like to use my MacBook sometimes. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on one of the iBooks from my library how to make your MacBook read to you. Now there are a couple of ways to do this, so let's get started. So the first way to do this is to highlight the text that you want to have read to you. This menu is going to come up. It's going to say more. Now you're just going to want to click on start speaking. Should know that outcome in effect causes the outcome to happen. Thus, the otherwise fabricated prediction becomes true. So that's one of the ways to doing this. Now here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of doing this. If you're doing a textbook, if you're reading a textbook and you've got to take notes, reading selected sections will allow you to stop and take your notes and proceed once you're ready. Now the disadvantage to doing this is if you just want it to read to you, it will stop at images. Images will not, like it'll stop the text. So if you have maybe a paragraph and then a picture and then another paragraph, it'll only read that first paragraph and then it'll say excerpt from whatever book. So the other way to make this work for you, to make your Mac read to you, is to go to your top bar and click on edit. Under edit, you're going to click on speech. Under speech, you're going to click on start speaking. Before I do this, there are advantages and disadvantages to this as well. The advantages to this is that it continuously reads every single page without stopping for images or anything else. The disadvantage is it continuously reads without stopping for images or anything else. The other disadvantage is, is that it doesn't turn pages. So even though you might be seeing page 80 in the book, you might have read to page 435. It will not tell you what page it's reading from. So this will make it start reading and... Allaying fears and offering theories from fear to understanding. Some of the... This will continue to read no matter what we do. We can go on the internet, we can... Um, start other applications or whatever you want to do and this should read in the background fine. Now if you don't see any of the, the menus that I've shown you let me go ahead and show you how you might be able to set those up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your Apple menu and then go to System Preferences. Under System Preferences you're going to want to go to Dictation and Speech. Now when I click this, at some point my audio might get fuzzy because the dictation is on, so it's going to probably mess with my audio, so I apologize in advance. So in this area, you're going to want to click on Text to Speech. And here are the voices. Now I've gone through all of the voices, and to me these are the three voices that sound the best. Alex is a male American voice, and it sounds what, that's the voice you heard earlier. Then there is Daniel and Kate, and they are UK male and female voices that sound the most human. Now, you can customize and add voices down here in the customize section. You can pick other English language um, voices that have different dialects, like South African, or maybe... 
uh, Australian, things like that. Um, you can also choose different languages in that section as well. You can also change the speech rate. Now I find if I'm doing a textbook that I like to have it a bit slower than normal because if I want it to continuously read and I just want to take notes, then what I'll do is I'll have it a little slower so that way I can take my note before having to listen to anything pertinent. Now to sample all of that you can play here and it will sample your speech rate and the voice that you're using. Most people recognize me by my voice. Most people recognize me by my voice. We'll play Daniel for you. Hello. My name is Daniel. I am a British English voice. And this is Kate. Hello, my name is Kate. I am a British English voice. Let's get into some of the other cool things that this can do. You can announce your alerts whenever you get any kind of alert, like low battery or notification alert. Uh, you can click that and then, for example, you can customize which voice you're using and then whatever the thing says. So I have it saying, oi, message, just because I thought it was funny. You could also change whatever else you want it to say. You can also have it delay a couple of seconds after you get your alert. So if you're, like, let's say watching a movie with somebody and you don't want it to sound, you can have it delay so you can see the alert and pause it or close the alert before the voice actually speaks. And again, you can play whatever it is that you're listening to whatever alert that it is that you wanted. So um, once you're done with that, just click OK. So you can change, customize a lot of your different types of alerts like that. You can also continue this in notification settings. Here you can choose what key makes your text speak. So um, when I stopped my text, all I pressed was Command S because that will start and stop my speech. And you can change whatever keys and whatever keys you press on your keyboard are the keys that it will use. Now the other cool thing that you can do is have it announce the time and it will announce on the half hour, the hour, or the quarter hour. And that's pretty cool for a little while, but like I said, <laughs> you know, uh, if you're watching a movie or something, you don't want to be disturbed, it kind of gets annoying, so um, you can choose that or not choose that, and you can also change your voiceover settings if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, but before we get into this really quickly, I wanted to get into something else. Um, I'll take you back there in just a moment, but I wanted to get into dictation, because dictation is something else that is not really talked about on the MacBook, you can dictate what you're speaking just like you can on the iPhone. So if you have any kind of essay or anything like that to write, this will help you out a great deal. This is also great for quick note taking. You just pop up one of the, um, the sticky notes and then just throw the dictation on and it just makes for really quick note taking. So you can turn dictation on or off. If you have it on, I highly recommend the um, enhanced dictation because that makes it quicker and easier for the dictation to take place and it will work offline. If you do not have this checked, what happens is everything you speak goes through Apple's servers and it takes a minute before it gets back to you and shows up on the screen. Let's go back here and we'll go into voiceover settings and I'm going to show you a couple of awesome stuff, things you can do in here. So if you don't want it to be read to and you want to read but your eyes get tired or they hurt after a while, you can enable the zoom feature. Now for me, zoom is enabled with option and command as well as the plus and minus button. So I'll press option command plus to make it bigger or option command minus to make it smaller. Now whenever you see me do this in a tutorial, I am using the zoom feature. And zoom just kind of makes it a little bit, you can make it a little bit bigger so um, if the font isn't really helping your eyes, you can make it a little bit bigger so that way you can read whatever's on the screen without straining. And if you like the way that my zooms look, you can just copy my features here. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was down here, you can also do more notif uh, more features with the dictation. In here you can do dictation demands, or commands, excuse me, and you have a list of stuff to choose from here. And then you can also click this and then type in a phrase that you'll say to make your dictation come to life, like 
um, kind of like the Hey Siri feature on your iPhone. You can have it play sound when the dictation starts, and you can also have it stop any audio that is going on in the background while you're dictating, so that way the uh, dictation device doesn't become confused. So those are some awesome features built into Max OS to help you with your studies and your reading materials. I hope you guys have enjoyed my tutorial. If you did, please share, comment, like, and of course, subscribe. That's it for me today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.